everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Today's interview, we have Mike Cobb, who has been living in Nicaragua for 14 years. We are going to get more details on what's that been for him. So let's go ahead, Mike. Can you introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, Paula. Thanks for having me on this morning. Um, yeah, my name is Mike Cobb, and I'm the CEO of ECI Development. Many of you uh, know who I am. And um, and I just want to make one comment. I did live in Nicaragua for 14 years, but I'm back in the States now. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm coming to you today from Shepherdstown, West Virginia, uh, in the Shenandoah Valley, about 90 miles west of Washington, D.C. So we wanted to start from, the, from when you moved to Nicaragua. What was the process like? What's been your experience back then? Yeah. Yeah, so we moved in 2002. Uh, I had a, my wife, Carol, and my two-year-old daughter, Amanda. Uh, we packed up everything we had here in our home in Shepherdstown, the same home we left, we came back to. Um, we packed everything up in a 40-foot container. We drove our car in the back end of it and uh, sent it off to Nicaragua. And we went down about 30 days later. And, and you know, it was a uh, it was an interesting process. We didn't really understand what would be involved and, and uh, you know, how it would actually work. Uh, my wife uh, did an incredible job of working with the customs officials uh, to get our uh, stuff out of customs and finally to get our car released uh, from customs. That was quite a process. But um, in the end, uh, she was able to get everything done and, and get all of our goods uh, moved into our new home. We rented a home. Uh, there for a couple years. We, we thought we were just going to be there for two, maybe three years. And so we rented a property, a home. But then once we decided that we liked it and we wanted to stay, uh, we actually then uh, bought a piece of property and, and had a home built for us. So did you visit before moving to Nicaragua? Um, yeah, I had been to Nicaragua. Hmm. I, I don't know. I, I'm a, I'll make up a number 20 times. Uh, but my wife had only been to Nicaragua once with me uh, in uh, 2002 in the spring, like over Easter. And then the second trip was in August to look for a home for her. So she had been to Nicaragua twice for less than a week, both times before we moved. Uh, but I'd been there maybe 20 times. Wow. Yeah. So did you speak Spanish or how was that for you? <laughs> <laughs> no, none of us spoke any Spanish. Uh, and so we went because obviously we had the job to do. We were getting our Grand Pacifica project started. We, uh, we had pro purchased the property in 2000. And then by 2002 had done enough of what I would call the entitlement work, getting some of our initial permitting and land planning done. So uh, we moved there to get the Grand Pacifica project really, you know, moving, right, to hire architects and engineers and contractors to come in and build the roads and the water and, and uh, you know, telecommunications, all of those types of infrastructure uh, we had to get started and get built. And so we moved with, no, yeah, no, no Spanish. None of us spoke any Spanish. Um, uh, my little two-year-old Amanda, she was the quickest to pick it up and she did great. <laughs> Uh, in fact, we, we very shortly after moving there, we stuck her in a little program called Kitty Stop, which is a you know, preschool kind of program. It's kind of cute. Uh, her very first Spanish word after about a week was Mio, which is <laughs> mine, <laughs> which for, for two-year-olds makes perfect sense, right? That's, That's the first fair. word she learned. Uh, anyway, and then uh, you know, Carol and I both took Spanish lessons. Uh, Carol did far better than I did because she was engaged in the local community, she was going. You know, she was working with our with our maid and our, our, our other folks that that worked with us at the house, uh, at the shops, and things like that. Whereas after my Spanish lesson every morning, I went to my office uh, and spoke English all day because I had to hire a fully bilingual staff, not speaking any Spanish when I moved there. So Carol had the you know the advantage of being able to use and practice her Spanish all day every day. Whereas I took my lessons and largely then spoke English the rest of the day. So uh, sadly, uh, and then we had another daughter, Emily, who came along a couple years after we moved. Uh, both daughters speak, you know, wonderful, perfect Spanish. Uh, Carol speaks excellent Spanish and, and I speak barely Spanish. So. <laughs> <laughs> but did that cause any like hiccups for you, like major challenge, um, not knowing the language? N not really, uh, you know, be because I knew that I needed fully bilingual staff, uh, we, we hired incredible people, many of whom who've been with us uh, since 2002, 2003, 
uh, which is really nice. I mean, we have, we have a team, a group of folks who are part of our ECI team, Grand Pacifica and Nicaragua, but uh, that many of whom have been with us for, you know, 14, 15, 16 years at this point. Uh, and, and no, they, they, they were excellent. They understood that, you know, that, that the business was going to need to be, you know, kind of internally run in English mm -hmm. and then externally everything in, in Nicaragua, obviously in Spanish. Uh, but, but very, very ca competent, capable bilingual staff. So, I mean, it was, it was, it's good for the company. It was bad for me personally, because I just never had to really, you know, force myself to, to learn Spanish. Okay. So based on that, like, did you, what was the difference like between living in America and then moving to Nicaragua? Um, you know, we really enjoyed the expat life. We, we went, like I said, for what we thought would be a couple, maybe three years. Uh, after being there for about three years, uh, we could have left. We, we had hired, you know, all the contractors. We'd had it. We built an incredible team of people. We'd hired a chief operating officer to run the business who lived in Nicaragua. And, and we still owned our home here in Shepherdstown. Uh, and Carol and I went out to dinner one night and we just, uh, took a piece of paper and we wrote down all the reasons to stay in Nicaragua, all the reasons to go home. And at, by the end of dinner, it was very obvious uh, that, you know, staying in Nicaragua was something that we wanted to do. We didn't have to, but we wanted to. And so we really, we, we found that our quality of life in Nicaragua was far higher. Uh, our cost of living was far less and 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 just some examples i mean you know having somebody to take care of your home uh, every day you know means no chores right and so literally we had no chores and and so we could we could do things in the evening we could read together we could do puzzles we could play games we could go out and bounce on the trampoline whatever it was we wanted to do we we did all that because we had no chores and then on the weekend, same thing. Like, what do you want to do this weekend? Oh, let's go to the mountains. Let's go to Samoto Canyon and, and go inner tubing. Or let's go find a butterfly farm in the, in the cloud forest, right? And so we were constantly out doing things as a family because we didn't have those chores. And it was very, very affordable to have full-time help. It was, you know, less than $200 a month. Uh, and we had a full-time maid. We had a, a part-time gardener, uh, uh, caretaker as well. Uh, and then, um, you know, the activities were very inexpensive. To go out to the movies uh, was, you know, two, three dollars for a ticket and maybe another two dollars for popcorn or something. I mean, it was just ridiculously inexpensive to go to the movies or go out to a, a beautiful, you know, five-star restaurant and have it cost, you know, twenty dollars uh, per person uh, was just, again, very, very affordable. Uh, and a lot of the things were free. I mean, you go to the beach and you can camp on the beach and there's nobody around and that's free, right? Or go to a go to the cloud forest and do some hiking. Maybe there was a park fee of a dollar to get in or something. But but an all day activity, you know, for a dollar or two. Uh, just again, we spent a lot of time outside. We spent a lot of time doing things as a family, and it was uh, it was an incredibly rewarding and wonderful experience. That uh, that that uh, you know, we were sad we had to come back in many ways. Uh, we came back because our daughter got into a dance program in New York City, a high school dance program. And, and it just made sense for us to be closer to New York City. Uh, and we're about four hours from New York right now where we live. So uh, that, that's why we came back. But, but honestly, if that hadn't happened, we'd still be in Nicaragua. Uh, again, the quality of life is phenomenal. The cost of living far, far less. So it, it, it's, I think it's the reason, Paula, that so many people are moving to the region, right? Uh, because, you know, that they can have this incredible quality of life, especially people who are retired or in the past have been re the, the retiree set, fixed income, you know, again, being able to live for a lot less and, and live much better. Uh, but now post COVID, what's very interesting is you know, people have seen that they can work from home. They are working from home. Companies know that the employees, you know, can work from anywhere. They don't have to be in their office at their desk, right? They can be at home at their desk or, or sitting on their couch or whatever. It doesn't matter. And because of that, many people now are saying, well, why do I need to wait till retirement to move overseas? Like I could move overseas right now and, uh, and, and, and enjoy this incredible quality of life, enjoy a reduced cost of living, enjoy the weather that I like or the activities that I enjoy doing on my days off and, 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 and do it from anywhere. So uh, I think this is going to be a game changer for countries like Belize. Uh, Barbados, I just saw today, this morning, uh, Barbados 
has invited anyone who wants to come to Barbados to live there for a year. Just come on down, live here for a year, and, and do your business remotely. If you could do it from, you know, from Washington, D.C. or New York or, or Kansas City or wherever you know, you're working from home, you can do it from Barbados. Uh, and, and, and I hope Belize uh, looks at legislation like that. I think, I think many countries, I think heck, all countries should look at legislation like that because you know, there are going to be a lot of Americans and Canadians who are looking to relocate for all those positive reasons. And, uh, and a country like Belize could certainly invite people down to come live there and do their work remotely from wherever they, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, well, I went, sorry, I went way <laughs> around, Paula, I don't know. <laughs> no worries. Uh, one other thing, was there any concern about the school and the health system while you were in Nicaragua? No, n n none at all. Uh, w w the Kitty Stop I mentioned is a, is a great mm -hmm. preschool kind of program. Uh, there's an American school uh, that runs a U.S. curriculum. A lot of U.S. embassy kids go there so they can stay current with, so if they go back to the United States, the curriculum is exactly what it is in the U.S. Um, uh, there's a, a French school, there's a science and technology school, uh, a German school, uh, some Christian schools, both Catholic and, and evangelical. Um, we ended up putting our daughters in the German school uh, for, for because, you know, the, the American school is a great option, of course, um, but, but in, it's an English-Spanish uh, school. And what we understood and what we wanted was a Spanish language instruction school with a secondary language. And so our choices were really the French school or the German school. And we liked the curriculum at the German school better. Uh, so we put the girls in the German school. Uh, they went to school in Spanish. That was their instruction language. Nobody spoke English. And then they learned German as a quote unquote second language. Uh, they're speaking English at home. So German really became a third language for them. But, but the primary reason was to have the school in Spanish so that their Spanish would be you know, perfect. And it is. Um, uh, you know, healthcare is, is phenomenal. Uh, again, it, it, it depends on where you are. If, it, if you're out in the middle of the countryside, uh, healthcare is, is, is adequate, maybe adequate at best in some cases. Uh, but in Managua and in the major metropolitan areas, the hospitals are excellent. The medical care is excellent. Uh, we took care of many, most of our medical needs in Nicaragua, and it was very, very affordable. Uh, you know, to go get an x-ray was, you know, like $30, right? You'd see the doctor, and it was maybe 30 bucks, and then you'd go get your x-ray, and it was another 30 bucks, and they read it right there on the spot. Uh, and so you didn't have to go back and forth. You didn't have to make big appointments. I mean, you just call up and show up kind of thing. So it was very easy to get medical care. And uh, i give one example. Um, when Carol was pregnant with Emily, our second daughter, this would have been like 2003, to early 2004, uh, Carol was getting 3D ultrasounds in Nicaragua. And she sent a note to one of her friends back in the US who was also pregnant at the time, said, hey, I got this 3D ultrasound, it's really cool, blah, blah, blah. And her friend said, what are you talking about, 3D ultrasound? And Carol's like, yeah, check it out. And she sent her the flower or whatever. And her friend was still getting the traditional 2D ultrasounds in the US whereas Carol was actually getting an advanced treatment in Nicaragua. So in, in, you know, it's kind of counterintuitive. You would say, well, that's crazy. But, but yes, the medical care is phenomenal. It's very, very inexpensive. Uh, and then the educational systems, again, uh, uh, can be kind of whatever you want. Uh, we, we had friends who had kids in the Christian schools. We had friends with kids in the, uh, in the Catholic schools, and then also the American school, and I think even the French school. So yeah, so it was uh, it, the educational systems are, are are varied, and 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 excellent. How about um, so? What did you like most? To close it off, then, what do you like most about Nicaragua? Hmm. <laughs> oh boy, uh, you know it, it's really a mix of things. There's no one thing that jumps out as like the the most important. But, but the kinds of things were the warmth of the family and friendship relationships that we had there. Uh, you know, and I say family because you know, we had friends with kids who our kids became friends with. So it wasn't just my friends and Carol's friends, it was our kids' friends. So, you know, and, 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 and we, we, we found a social circle of, of, of professionals 
uh, and most of them spoke English. Uh, in fact, all of them spoke English, although, you know, uh, the, the, the true test of speaking Spanish well was we would go to the parties and for a long time, everyone would switch to English. And then uh, eventually we'd go to a party and uh, Carol would go talk to the ladies and they would keep talking Spanish. I would join a group of men and they would all switch to English. Um, so Carol obviously got to the point where her Spanish was good enough that they didn't have to quote suffer through uh, the Spanish. Mine never got good enough that, you know, whatever. I mean, I would participate in Spanish, but, but it was miserable for me and for, for probably my friends too. So they all just switched to English. Um, but you know, we had great friends. We had great family friendship relationships, and 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 the focus on the family is is really wonderful. Uh, it's a very family oriented. Uh, 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 it's a very conservative culture in the sense that traditional, maybe not conservative, but no conservative, but traditional cultural uh, feeling. And so uh, we really enjoyed that. Uh, we enjoyed being able to go out to dinner. Kids were always welcome in restaurants. There was never an issue. Even in the finest dining establishments, you know, kids are welcome. Uh, again, the affordability uh, was was tremendous. Uh, we were able to eat organic. We had a big bag of a giant coffee sack. I mean, you know, a coffee bag full of organic fruits and vegetables delivered to our home, you know, every Tuesday. Again, delivered to our home every Tuesday morning, and it was $8.00. It was more than we could eat in the whole week. I mean, we couldn't eat that much. And so again, uh, being able to eat better, eat organic, eat healthy, uh, and, and have it cost just so much less and be able to do things like go to the movies or my girls danced and, and they still dance, um, but they were involved in a dance program there with, with Annabelle Zamora and, and Annabelle was at one point Nicaragua's prima ballerina. Um, and so she was their teacher. So again, being able to engage at, at those kinds of activities, both for us as, you know, as adults, but also for the kids, uh, was tremendous. And so uh, it, was, it was just a really, really nice package. I got to say that, again, no one big thing jumps out, but all of it together made it an incredibly rewarding and wonderful experience for us. Thank you, Mike. Thank you for sharing your family's yeah. experience with us. You're welcome. Thanks for having me on, Paula. Welcome.